uh, for record, all students are in the class. Right now, we are looking at um, second half, which is called uh, non isentropic flow. Non isentropic flow. And we, we, we will focus on one, one special name called Fano flow. Uh, Fano flow. F A N N O, Fano flow. Uh, what mean by funnel flow mean that we have a constant area with it like a pipe constant area and the flow is adiabatic the flow is adiabatic means that um, you insulate insulate means you do not allow any heat to loss to the environment you insulate it and then the flow is adiabatic means there is no heat change inside the system okay the energy will stay inside the system Okay, uh, this is about final flow. The equation, you go through my slides. And all the equation later on, uh, you will see in the tutorial. Um, for final flow, uh, one important concept is uh, conservation of mass. Our M dot always constant inside the pipe. Our M dot from point one to point two always constant, like what we did for uh, chapter one until chapter five. One important uh, key I want to mention here is that, oh, that is this one, huh? at this point, huh? uh, take, take a little bit more attention on this point. For final flow, your pressure change is incompressible uh, or Chapter six, uh, we're look, looking about compressible flow. Um, cannot use daisy weber equation anymore for chapter six. Uh. This is a, I put double highlight here. Because uh, some of you are still in uh, chapter three or chapter four. Uh. So again, for chapter six, you can no longer use daisy weber uh, equation uh, to calculate the pressure change. Don't write any daisy weber equation uh, when it comes to uh, isentropic flow or non-isentropic flow, especially when it comes to uh, compressible uh, scenario. Okay. Uh, now we focus on funnel flow. Again, funnel flow is a straight pipe uh, with insulated wall, means there is no heat transfer. The flow is adiabatic. Uh, um, then I will show you. Now, important graph for this uh, funnel flow is T versus S. T versus S, and the and the the shape of funnel line is like this. Shape of the funnel line is like this. Okay. And I like to highlight some important. Okay, this 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 uh, this slide is important where we'll focus on uh, equation one, equation two, equation three. So equation one, you see the H enthalpy, rho, uh, and H naught, you see the zero, naught means the stagnation, and G means uh, is a rho V, la. G, G means rho V, is a constant value, and uh, change of entropy in CP, of course you can, you can find change of uh, entropy in a CV term. La. So uh, we're going to look at funnel line uh, in the T versus S graph. What is all this uh, point mean is important huh, for this uh, uh, second section. So in funnel line, T versus S, you will have this uh, solid line. It's like a comic, uh, uh, comic uh, orbit. It will start from the top and then go to the one point two, go to point A and then revert back. Okay, final line is a very interesting line. It go from top one to hit the maximum here and then go back. Okay, this is a T versus S, meaning you see the, the entropy value. It will increase, increase, increase because this is uh, 
S1, S2, S A, you see the entropy value increasing and then entropy decreasing. The detail you can read from my slides. I'll show you the important. Okay, if you, you can calculate the velocity at point A, velocity at point A will be square of your speed of sound. Yeah. Your funnel line, meaning your flow flow, at a certain point, when you hit the maximum point of your S value, S max, it means that it's the point where the temperature start decreasing and your entropy also start decreasing. So this point, the velocity equal to speed of sound. Mark number equal to one. Okay. On top is subsonic. I mean, if you break the funnel graph, if you break the funnel graph into half, top portion, which is from here to here, represent subsonic region with its mark number less than one. And then mid mark number one. And it will continue to accelerate. We mean second region here is supersonic region. So when you look at funnel scenario, T versus S graph is important. You will always see this line, this kind of shape. And uh, what the interested, uh, interest, interested area is point A, which is mark number one. And then uh, look at number mark number one, then it will ask you whether uh, if you decrease temperature, what happened? Uh, increase temperature, what happened? Okay. So a general idea about uh, funnel uh, flow is on this graph. Huh? So T versus S with a curve like that. And then top bottom is super, uh, subsonic, uh, bottom is supersonic. Uh, and choking happen uh, at mark number one here. This is called choking due to friction only. Due to friction. Huh? Entropy increase. Why, why, your, why you move from point one to point two, your S is increasing your S1 more than, uh, not more, less than S2. Okay, then um, the increase of S value is because of friction eh? in funnel scenario, funnel flow scenario. Okay. and the rest you can read. So this represent one process. Okay, this represent one process. So um, if you give more friction force, M, M dot will re reduce, flow density G, which is your rho V will reduce. And this line can no longer use, it will move towards right, huh? you'll move to road towards right. So funnel, funnel uh, graph is a bit uh, special. Okay, so first graph, first scenario, case one. If you increase more friction, funnel curve will move to the right. This is case two. You will always move to the right. Huh? This is just a concept. Huh? This is a concept. So what happens if you have a funnel flow and then you keep increasing the friction? Right? The flow is choked and then you keep increasing the friction. What happened to the line? It will move to the right. Means you, this is a case one, case two, case three, if you keep on increasing the 
friction. Okay, this is a general concept about funnel line. Okay, this one you can read from my slides. This table will help you, like what we did on Friday. So summary of the funnel flow, you can read from this table. The flow, you can, you know that we have two types of flow, subsonic and supersonic. So what happened to the parameter? Stagnation temperature means T0. What happened to the Mach number? What happened to the friction? What happened to the pressure? What happened to the temperature? You look at summary of the funnel flow behavior. Okay. Again, uh, if you're given a funnel, funnel flow diagram, T versus S, this is T versus S. Are you able to tell where is the region of subsonic and supersonic? It should be easy. Huh? You break, you go to the point A, break half. Point A, mark number equal to one. This region, subsonic. This region, supersonic. Okay, by referring to uh, this, this slide. Okay, then the rest, uh, the tutorial, you go through uh, the steps in my slides. I guided you step by step in my slides. Have a look how you apply the final flow equation in the scenario. Okay, I, I, I already included all the detailed steps in the, in the tutorial slides here. So you go through and then uh, you fill in. Huh? The, the equation because all the equation you already familiar already. like as t is a new one you look into the slides you just apply what is all this and then find the cp and apply okay read through the slides and this one also uh, there's another uh, momentum equation in dimensionless form what is important is this one, this equation. This one is to find, uh, later I'll give you a, a case scenario. So this, this equation is to use to analyze uh, 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 a case where you have a straight line with the friction on it. Okay, dimensionless flow form. Yeah, this one you can read from my slides. Yeah, so when we look at funnel flow, uh, this kind of uh, scenario, uh, we, we, we will study a lot of times, um, but the time is not at our side, so you read through my slides. Huh? So what is funnel flow application is that um, when we have a, a long pipe, um, then uh, we need to calculate the critical length uh, before we have the before we have a chalk flow, imagine you you have a long pipe adiabatic flow. You want to find a critical length before we have a chalk flow at a certain length. Uh, so there's an equation to to calculate this critical length. Yes. Any question? Who is on mic? Joshua, you have anything to ask me? Okay. All right, so uh, the rest you can read from my slides. I will stop at uh, important equation. All these are derivation. Huh? You can read through my slides. I will stop when I arrive. Huh? And yeah, this jumbo equation. This jumbo equation we use for uh, final flow. Okay. Uh, it's a very lengthy equation. 
And there's uh, another equation. Very lengthy. Um, and then what is important is this side. F times the L star minus L divided by D is the equation we use to find L star. This one, you, you just uh, plug in all the value because on the left hand side, it's only have the K and mark number. You only have K and mark number, you just plug in the number. Okay, you just plug in the mark number given, K value, use a calculator to find the long value of this, this term. So in the equation, you only left out, uh, this one you can find on the left hand side, it's a constant value. Uh, friction force, you can find from the, um, uh, you can find from the uh, Moody chart. You see, remember the Moody chart, you have the F, E divided by D and Reynolds number. Uh, so you use the Moody chart to find this F. So D you, is given, so at the end, you can find the is, uh, L star, critical length where the chalk will happen. Okay, the rest you read from my slides, you have a uh, unchalk and chalk scenario. So if you have an unchalk, you use the left hand side equation. I repeat, uh, if you have uh, this scenario, long pipe, adiabatic, uh, final flow, you use unchalk flow, you use the left hand side equation. And then for the chalk scenario, you uh, you you use the same scenario also, but um, there's a certain process. Huh? There's a certain process about that one. Okay, uh, the difference between a uh, chalk and unchalk if you compare two diagram, you can two diagram. So if you have a chalk. Um, If you have a chalk, uh, this is just assume. Uh. On the left hand side, unchalk one means uh, the length is more than your section. For example, your L star in your calculation is 100 meter, but the application of your tube you use, for example, only 50 meter, 50 meter pipe with the funnel flow. Then in this case, you won't have, uh, you won't have, uh, you you won't have chalk flow. Means uh, you, your your flow will be uh, will be normal, and there's no chalk. However, if your, um, for example, your length is 150 meter, then you have a chalk flow inside there. Okay, so this is the difference between chalk and unchalk. Uh, a new graph and table to introduce to you, which is quite straightforward. Uh, if you need to analyze a uh, final flow, you straight away go to uh, diagram D.F, or there's a, a description there called final flow graph, and also table D.F for final flow. It will be the same for table D1 or DI. Same. Okay. Same, huh? Uh, only you need to be careful when you come to uh, funnel flow uh, graph is that um, bottom mark number and then you have a left hand axis and right hand axis the number still same the num number same for the uh, both side and then top also same uh, to the bottom for example you find uh, if you want there are few parameter lines here uh, P over P0, which is here, it is this line. T line is this one. F, F times L star minus 1, D is this line. Uh, v over V star is this line. Pressure 0 over pressure 0 star is this line. So, um, Table here also can find the, the all the value here. 
Again, all this table referring to mark number. With one, one mark number, you have all this number. And with one mark number, you go to this number and you can find uh, the missing parameter. And there's an equation for this one, right? This equation is important for chalk final flow. All these are derivation. Um, all the all the equation that you see on the screen here, um, you you sometimes you need to use uh, t over t star, v over v star, rho over rho over rho star, p star. All these are inside table uh, that I show you just now. Table final flow, uh, d dot f or it's actually the same as the diagram funnel flow. Same. We have equation to solve also. Okay. And there's a tutorial question for, to apply uh, how to plot the funnel line. This one also inside my PowerPoint slide. You go through. I go through by using the equation that uh, we mentioned. Uh, step by step, so I show you find one point. And then uh, just repeat, repeat the process. Okay, it's quite a lengthy process. And then another one is that I want to look at uh, this example on final flow. Also, uh, you go through the uh, the steps for this tutorial question. Okay, all these are application of the equation that you've seen on the screen just now. Okay. It's quite a, a lengthy steps. Okay, there are a few examples for uh, final flow. And then look at uh, this application. Why final flow is important because uh, now today uh, we are using all these hosts for ventilation. Uh, one extreme example is the astronaut using oxygen supply to the uh, their suit. So final flow is app applied here from one point to another point. OK, so you look at this example, go through the formula and this formula is given. So it's a lengthy process to to uh, develop this mass flow rate uh, stagnation property. I, I will not go through, but we just straight away apply this one. Uh, focus on uh, why final flow is so important is that at the end we, we use final flow to determine the size of the pipe. Okay. We go through all these uh, example. And uh, just to let you know that uh, the Moody chart, there's an online calculator. Uh, you can uh, double check your answer uh, in final exam. You just go to a Moody chart there, uh, input your Reynolds number, relative lambdas, and you calculate the friction factor, whether it's correct or not. Of course, this one only for your own checking. Uh, it will not apply as the final final exam question uh, answer. Okay, there's a calculator for Moody chart. Okay, again, your very high chance your final exam will need to go back to Moody chart application again. Okay. We'll cover that in next week revision class. Okay, and then the rest is about uh, uh, about the wave. Huh? Okay, what is important here is okay when you have a supersonic wave. If you look at these two diagram, um, uh. Why I'm showing this one because uh, you're going to uh, apply this knowledge when you go to work. Uh, if you have a very fast object moving at a supersonic uh, speed, you will have the shock wave. And um, in this form, 
uh, see ya. So if your speed is too high, the wave will be nearer and nearer to the object. So this diagram B is more on the uh, on the curved wave that you will see, All right? It's just a phenomena uh, because we don't have the instrument to measure. So this is just a knowledge. Uh, what what happened uh, to the short wave? Uh. Okay. So go through all the tutorial question that I say just now. Huh? 